Hi there YouTube, James here and today I'm here with the bad news that the Google Nexus is dead. Instead we have the Google Pixel XL as Google's brand new smartphone. Let's take a look at it. So the Google Pixel XL comes with a 5.5 inch 2K display. That's the main difference between the Pixel and the Pixel XL. This has a much bigger screen. In terms of design, it's a very similar looking smartphone also as controversial looking as the Pixel. I've heard some people really like the design of this phone and some people really dislike it, mainly because of this two-tone uh, material here. You've got metal down at the bottom and glass on the top. We quite like it, but it might not be to your taste. On the back, there is no camera bump, unlike if you were to buy an iPhone 7 Plus. Now, down here is the Google logo. This is a phone produced by Google, actually made by HTC, but it's got Google branding all over it. And also on the back is the fingerprint sensor. It's not on the bottom where you likely find it on most other smartphones. It's instead really easy to reach. There you go, simple. So the Google Pixel XL is not waterproof like the iPhone 7 or if you were to buy the Sony Xperia XZ. That's a bit of a problem if you think you're gonna be splashing your phone a little bit, but there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top of the phone. One of the other things we've been quite disappointed in is there are no stereo speakers on the Pixel XL. So if you're gonna be looking to be blurring out a lot of music through your phone, you wanna go for something like the HC10. Now, if you're planning to buy a Google Daydream VR headset, this is the phone to get alongside it. With the larger screen, it means it's perfect to put inside the Daydream VR headset. Now, the two Pixel phones are the first phones you're gonna be able to buy with Android 7.1 on board. Now, that means you're gonna get this brand new stock interface. It looks gorgeous, and this is the cleanest interface you're gonna be able to get on an Android phone. Unlike if you were to go for something like Samsung, which has a lot more stuff on top, this is the pure Google experience, and if you are a massive Google fan, this is probably the choice to go for. Now, the biggest benefit of Android 7.1 is access to Google's brand new assistant program. This is a competitor to the likes of Siri and Cortana, and is a bit like Google now, but it's trying to give more context to your searches. So for example, one of the searches we ran was, what is a zebra? Then you can follow up with a question of, show me pictures, and it will understand that you're still speaking about the zebra. We tried to do this with a few of the directions, and it didn't always work when you asked if you wanted to be able to walk somewhere. It's a bit temperamental at the moment, but this is only gonna get better as Google keeps improving it and people keep using it. Google Assistant certainly has more personality than Google Now did. It's a little bit more like Siri in that regard. You can even ask it questions about Siri and you're gonna get a few jokes back. It's not perfect at the moment, but it is a big improvement on Google Now and it's likely to get better as it goes on. The Google Pixel XL debuts the brand new Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 processor, one of the best processors on the market right now, meaning that you're gonna get all the power you need in a smartphone with this, especially alongside the four gb of RAM that you'll also find. In terms of our benchmarking scores, we have seen some fantastic results from the Google Pixel XL, and it's even rivaling the Samsung Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge in terms of smartphone power. Whatever mobile games you're gonna be wanting to play on this phone, you're gonna be able to run it with the Pixel XL. This is top of the range. Now the Google Pixel XL let us down a little bit in terms of battery life. It comes with a massive cell inside it. It's 3,450 milliamps. Because it's a larger phone with a 2K screen, it needed it. And it's not doing particularly well in some of our testings. We found that it would last the, av the average of a day but when you were watching video, it went down to 68% after 90 minutes on YouTube with connectivity options on. That is the worst we found in an Android phone so far in 2016. That might just be a problem with one of our units. We need to have a quick look at that. But so far, we're not finding the best battery life, but it will last you the full day if you're doing normal tasks. To recharge it, you'll be using USB-C and there's fast charging capabilities as well. In terms of the camera, Google is selling this as the best smartphone camera on the market. And the DxO Mark score does sell that. It has an 89, while the S7 Edge only has an 88. We're getting some really vivid colors. We've got good low light performance, but you're gonna get your best picture in good lighting. And it's really good for a 12 megapixel sensor. So the Pixel XL does have quite a controversial design. It's not gonna to be to everyone's taste. We quite like it though. It's a really nice looking phone. It still looks really premium. You're gonna get really high in spec underneath a hood. You're also gonna get one of the best cameras you can get on the market in a smartphone. There are some negatives. This isn't a waterproof phone. There aren't stereo speakers and it is expensive. This is gonna be the same price as the iPhone 7 or most of the other flagship Android phones you can buy right now. But if you want a pure Google experience with Google Assistant already on it, 
the Google Pixel XL is probably the best phone to go for, especially if you want to be using VR in Daydream as well. Be sure to check out our unboxing videos of both the Pixel and the Pixel XL, as well as our full review of the Google Pixel in this corner right here. And while you're here, go down below in the comments and we'd love to know what you think of both of these phones. Thanks for liking, thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.